Hey guys, it's Cameron my review for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And what Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is essentially about is we center on the character of Miles Morales, not Peter Parker, though he does play a vital role in this film. And he is essentially trying to balance his life with being both a high school student and recently uh, starting to develop these superpowers and become Spider-Man and... Basically, after uh, Wilson Fisk designs this collider, it ends up sending a bunch of various different Spider-Men into Miles' um Miles' world, and basically they, along with Peter Parker, help train him to become a better Spider-Man, but also try to get back to their universe, and that's really all I'm gonna say. So Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse, I was pretty hyped for this film. I mean, this just looked so different and creative, and it really looked like it was going to bring something different to the Spider-Man universe that we just haven't really seen before. And, you know, I've loved a lot of the Spider-Man films we've gotten. You know, I've really enjoyed that. I really loved the Tom Holland one last year. But this looked like something different altogether, and... I am so happy to say that this film did not disappoint at all. In fact, it exceeded my expectations. This is easily one of the best Spider-Man films we have ever gotten and is instantly one of my favorites of the entire year. But we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast. And look, with a film like this where there's so many different characters and so many different personalities, it's really hard to begin because everyone is so well casted here. But I will say, the first person to talk about is Shamik Moore as Miles Morales, who completely carries this entire film. Despite the fact there are all a bunch of different Spider-Men here, this is primarily Miles' film. It is his origin story, and he does a fantastic job here. I mean, Miles is a character is someone who you can tell he's looked up to Spider-Man, for a long time. He is very nerdy. He's not really doing well in school. He doesn't have the greatest relationship with his family and you see how these powers, they start to give him a greater purpose. He starts to finally feel like he has, you know, something else to, he, he has something to give. And I really love seeing that with his character. He's a lot of fun to watch, but he also does have some really great emotional moments. And he really does shine in both fields. Miles Morales is not a character that I was familiar with. I knew of the name, obviously, but I really did not know too much about him. And after this film, I really hope we get to see him again because he was fantastic. Here. I loved what he had to do, and I thought he was perfectly casted in this film. But someone who does rival him at points is Jake Johnson as Peter Parker, who, let me just tell you right now, this is not the Peter Parker that you and I are familiar with. Um, this is a very different kind of Peter Parker. He is still grappling, you know, with certain things. Obviously, his Uncle Ben has died, and Mary Jane's his love interest, but he's a lot more down in his luck. He's very much going through a midlife crisis. He is a lot chubbier, and he just completely relishes this role. I mean, he is absolutely hilarious to watch, but he also does a very good job of kind of being a mentor to Miles, and the bond that they form is very profound. It's one of the best parts of this entire movie, or just these two interacting, getting to see them start to, you know, seeing him train him, but also seeing Miles help him realize the mistakes that he's made in his life. I really love seeing here. Johnson was just at the top of his game. It's probably one of his best performances, and I really love what he did here. And then all of the other uh, Spider-Men that we encounter here are all very well casted. Haley Steinfeld is fantastic once again as Gwen Stacy. Nicolas Cage, man, holy shit, does he kill it. I mean... Spider-Man Noir is one of the ones that sticks out immediately, and I loved what Cage did in the role. He was really great. John Mulaney is hysterical as Peter Porker. Kimiko Glenn is really great as Penny Parker. Everyone really does a great job with the various Spider-Men, and uh, at no point does it feel like someone is overdoing it. They all feel like they all feel somehow grounded in reality. As ridiculous as some of them are, they all really do feel grounded in reality, and I think all of them really did a great job here. But the rest of the cast as well also really does kill it. Uh, Liev Schreiber is a really great kingpin. I really love what he did in this film. 
he's not Vincent D'Onofrio for sure. I mean, there will never be another Vincent D'Onofrio. I don't think we're going to get another portrayal of Kingpin that somehow um, bumps up, Vin that somehow um, rivals Vincent D'Onofrio. But he does do a very good job here. He understands who Kingpin is. He's very intimidating. And he also has a really good backstory to him, which I'll get to a little bit later. But I really like what Leah Schreiber did. Mahershala Lee, once again, is really great. Brian Tyree Henry is in basically everything lately. And another really great role for him. I really loved his role here. He plays the father to Miles Morales, who he wants to have a good relation with his son, but there is a bit fra there's a bit of friction there because he doesn't really agree with a lot of what Spider-Man is doing. And I thought that was a really cool idea. I really love where they went with him. Luna uh, Lauren Vallis is very good. Catherine Hahn is really great in this film. I don't want to say too much about her, but she does a really great job. Um, you know, Lily Tomlin's really good. Everyone is fantastic here. Everyone is so well casted, and I can't say enough about how perfectly casted everyone is here. But now I really want to get to the directing and the writing, which when talking about the directing, I'm surprised that this film isn't so messy and isn't a complete clusterfuck because if you guys don't know, there are three different directors on this film. Three. And it's, it's crazy. There's three different directors and each one of them are able to bring this style and just this uh, different sort of... And each one of them are able to bring something new and fresh that we just haven't really seen to Spider-Man. The film is very funny, and there are definitely a lot of entertaining moments, but the thing that they do very well is balance the story. There's a lot of dramatic stuff. There's a, The film is a lot more dramatic and emotional than I was really expecting, and I think they did a very good job with that, and I can't believe that... There are three directors to this film, and the fact that it is even somewhat coherent uh, is very surprising to me. Usually, that is a recipe for disaster. Most times when I see, you know, most times when I see a film that's, like, really overstuffed or feels like it's very incoherent, it's because there's too many directors. And the fact that there were three directors on this project and, you know, again, the film was able to flow as well as it did uh, is astounding to me, and I think they did just a fantastic job with it. But the writing is really what I want to get into in this film because there is a lot to love about this film right off the bat. I mean, sure, there are similar beats to some of Miles' story. He does get bit by a spider, okay, that is in there. And yes, he is in high school. But there's a lot more going on with him that we haven't seen. Like I said, he has a family that doesn't really agree with a lot of what he's doing. Some of the most interesting stuff is his relationship with his dad, who, like I said, he's a cop. And because of that, he feels that Spider-Man isn't necessary because it's making cops feel like they have less of a role in situations. And that's something that we haven't really seen in a Spider-Man movie before. And I thought that was just such a great idea, seeing how people feel about Spider-Man and from the perspective of a cop and I really love that. And then you also have uh, Miles' uncle, who he has a very good relationship with that I really enjoyed seeing a lot. And his story overall, like I said, as much as the Spider-Men are in there, this is very much Miles' origin story. And it is one hell of an origin story. This is how you do an origin story. I mean, the evolution that he goes through in this film is not one I was really expecting, but you really will find yourself rooting for him by the end of it. And I really loved where they end up going with his character. It's really not what I was expecting. I was expecting basically everyone to be the focus. But Miles really is the focus here. And thank God for it because it really does work here. Now, as far as all the other characters go, something I was really worried to going into this film is that there was going to be too many characters. There were so many various things they were trying to cover, and I did not think that they were going to cover it um, as smoothly as they did. But the film wisely chooses to give each one of these characters a little introduction. And what I mean by that is they give like a comic book style introduction where they're like, all right, this is what's happened to me. And by doing this, 
you know, in the small increment of time, it's able to do away with any worries of them giving too much backstory to a character and not enough to the others. Peter Parker, Gwen Stacy, Penny Parker, uh, you know, Spider-Man Noir, and Spider-Ham, they all get equal time, and they all get enough time and in there, and that's something that I was very happy about. And again, they do play second banana to Miles' story, because it is his film, and they do a good job with that, but they don't forget to give these characters something to do. There is a lot of trauma that these characters are dealing with. Each of them have lost something significant within their life, and uh, you see how it really has changed them as individuals. Even someone as silly as Spider-Ham, he is dealing with something, and they still do a very good job with that, and that's something that I was so impressed by. They t Again, they took characters that could have been so silly and so ridiculous, and they made made them feel grounded. They made them feel like they were given a higher purpose than I really was expecting, and that's something else that I really did love here. Also, Kingpin in this movie. Like I said, not Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. He's not nearly as fleshed out as he is, but he definitely has enough. We get the story of what we need with him. We see what he's going through, and his, his motivation in general is a really great one. You can see what fuels him to open this collider? What is he really trying to accomplish here? He never comes off too cartoony, and he is a very good villain. There are many moments throughout the film where he is just terrifying to watch, and I thought they did a really great job with exploring Kingpin. Again, he's not in the movie as much as you might expect him to be, but he still does do a very strong job here, and they do a very good job with writing him. And again, a very small increment of time, and they're able to give him a lot of emotional baggage, and I think they did a very good job with that here. But something else I really loved about this film is how much it really does take its time with things. In fact, it really isn't until the 40 minute mark until we really get J uh, Jake Johnson's iteration of Spider-Man. Up until then, this is very much Miles' story. Like I said, it is pretty much all the way through, but he really is front and center here. And I thought that was a very good job because they can keep introducing things in a way that feels organic. And, you know, I was worried that it was going to come across very messy, but it is a film that is very frenetic. It is very well paced, but... Again, it knows when to take its time with things. So once those other iterations of Spider-Man, once they come in there, they feel welcomed. You can, t you know, the film is always introducing so many interesting ideas and peeling back the layers of all these various characters, and they just do a very good job with that because of the fact that they really did take their time, and that's something else that I was very impressed by here. And what this film is going to do for Spider-Man moving forward is very intriguing. There's a lot of possibilities that they explore in this film, and things that I am very interested in seeing in a future film. I'm not not necessarily saying it has to be a Miles Morales film. You can still have Miles Morales in there, but maybe get another character that was in this film, put them front and center. I'd love to see them do something like that. If they want to maybe do something where say they give the focus to Gwen Stacy that they gave to Miles Morales in this film and they do a whole film about her, um, I think that could really work. I mean, there were multiple points in this film where I'm like, I want to see more from this character. I want to see more. I really do want to see more from all of these guys. And if they're starting some sort of franchise where they're able to just put the focus on one character but still have all the other Spider-Men in there, I think it's a really cool idea and I'm very excited to see where they go with that moving forward. And like I said, this film is absolutely hysterical. There are so many funny moments in this movie, but something that I really appreciate is that it is not making fun of the previous iterations of Spider-Man. There are references to the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield characters in there, but it's not making fun of them. It's showing that they do exist, and this is just something that is fundamentally different, and it does a very good job with doing that. It's very funny. It's there's a lot of very memorable jokes in there, and again, while there are things that might be poking fun at Spider-Man, it's never making fun of it. It's always treating it with respect, and I, it really does show um, how much this character has evolved over the years, and I think they did a really good job with that overall.
but it's also not trying to uh, be like, oh, this is Sony's answer to Spider-Man. We know Disney took it from us, and this is our answer to that. That's not what this film is. It is taking the Spider-Mans that we've seen before and kind of doing something different and turning it on its head. It's not trying to negate what Disney has done, and I think they did a good job with that. It shows that this is simply just a different universe. It's not you know, the New York in this film, this is not the New York in the Marvel films. It's a very different type of universe, and they did a very good job with conveying that here. That is something that I wasn't worried about, but some people might be worried about going into this movie, and I'm happy to say that I think within the opening minutes, and I literally mean the opening minutes, the film, that is, it's going to assuage that completely. You're not, that's not going to be a problem, and it's not something to worry about. Something else I really loved about this film is where they decide to go with Miles Morales' powers. Unlike other, you know, films, it doesn't just happen. Like, it's not like he has these powers and that's kind of it. It actually does take him a while to master his abilities. There's a great sequence where we see that while Spider-Man is, you know, Peter Parker is taking him under his wing, he doesn't fully trust him because he still needs to master certain abilities. So... It becomes a very relatable character in that sense. Miles does go through a lot of growth in that way, and seeing what he ends up doing and eventually mastering those abilities, it feels very satisfying, and I really love the way that was done here. The animation in this film, though, is on another level. I mean, it is unparalleled, and the fact that they were able to get basically every style of animation that we can think of, minus, like, stop motion, that's the only style of animation I did not see in here, and the fact that they were able to do it is incredible, and there is so much that can be said about that, but so much has already been said. So what I really want to focus on this film, you know, besides the fact that the animation is incredible, I mean, just seeing Spider-Ham and and Penny Parker blend in with the other characters, and they don't feel out of place. They don't feel like they don't fit in with the background. It, it works very well. A lot of times, that's what ends up happening, and they do very or they fit in very organically. And I think they did a very good job with that. What I really want to focus on is this film's specific aesthetic. It has a very unique style to it, in that it is styled like a comic book, and it's a really cool idea. And they are very dedicated to that idea. Going as far as to when Miles is saying things. You'll see, like, speech bubbles pop up, and you'll see, you know, when a, when a character is introduced, there's, like, a new edition of that character in these, like, comic book series. It's such a cool idea, and it's something that I can't believe it took us so long to get something like. I really love that so much. And the film, yeah, it can be very meta, but it's not trying to mock comic books. It very well um, does a good job of making it feel like its own thing, and I really loved the animation to this film. It is truly the best animation that I think I've seen all year. It is just so visually pleasing. It's astounding to look at, and I can't believe it turned out as well as it did here. Also, the score in this movie is fantastic. It has a very specific sort of urban feel to it, and I can basically say this. You know how you felt when you watched Black Panther and that soundtrack was just so refreshing? Very similar to Spider-Verse. There's a very similar type of soundtrack there, and I think it works even better here. Miles is someone who, he uses music as a way to calm himself down. It's very much a coping mechanism for him, and... It does play a vital role in this movie, and I really did enjoy that a lot. I thought the score was really good, but not just the soundtrack. The score itself is very epic. It really puts you into it, and they did a really good job with it. The editing as well of this film, like I said, this for me is some of the best editing of the entire year. It's so well-paced. It really did fly by. But it really does take its time with things in a way that I really was not expecting it to, and I think they did a really great job with that. Ultimately, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse is just a phenomenal film. It is unlike any Spider-Man film we've seen before. It's able to include so much and still somehow feel, um, you know, feel... Uh, coherence and feel like it it's paced well and things like that. It never feels like it's doing too much too soon. It always felt like it was very well paced and 
I'll put it to you this way. If you like the Tom Holland film but felt like it was missing something, this is it. This is most likely that missing ingredient that you really do want. Spider-Man Homecoming is the resurgence of Spider-Man. This is really that connective tissue. This is the thing that really gets that character back into full shape. And I am very excited to see where they go with him moving forward. I love what Disney is doing, but honestly, I'm really interested in seeing where Sony ends up going from here on out. And I never thought I'd say that, but Sony Pictures Animation absolutely knew what they were doing here, and they created basically the best animated film of the entire year. It's one of the best superhero films this entire decade. It's unlike anything we truly have seen before, and that's it, very hard to say when we're getting so many various superhero films. The fact that this film can stand out as well as it did is a huge accomplishment, and I can't wait to see where we really do go moving forward. I've basically said all I need to. There's so much more I'd love to delve into, but that would involve spoiler territory, and I really don't want to say that. Also, stay after the credits, please. There is a fantastic post credit scene there that you definitely don't want to miss. Ultimately, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse is really just something that I think everyone is really going to love. There really is a little something in there for everyone. It's one of the best films of the entire year, and I am absolutely going to give Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse overall in A+. Plus. Seriously, guys, see this as soon as you can. This really came out of nowhere for me. I was expecting to enjoy this film and maybe find it solid, but I was not expecting for this to be on the level that it actually was. But either way, guys, in my review, Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse, so much you guys saw this from overall. Love your thoughts, and we'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.